Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. Doesn't look like anybody's going to show up live, so we'll just get started for this. This is being recorded, so we can re-show it later. So, you ready? I got a uh, Amber here. I guess I'll tell him that in a minute. So, my name is Tony. <laughs> I live a simple life, and I literally dedicate 100% of my time on three things. Seeking God, studying money, and loving my wife. I have a super excellent wife named Amber and no children, but two fur babies, Clark and Lewis. In 2017, when the price of Bitcoin was going ballistic and in the news, like most of the rest of the world, that's when I first started asking myself, what is this Bitcoin thing I've heard of? And why is this happening? Why I feel you should trust my educated guesstimates are because my opinions are based on well over 2,500 hours of invested into listening to every opinion I can get on the subject of money, its history, economies, and how the world works and people interact. As for crypto, I have well over 1,500 hours of opinions and learning. This puts me in a unique position to be able to guess the outcomes of how these two systems will converge. And that's why I'm investing myself into the crypto world and why I want you to take advantage of picking my brain now while there's time. I only want to invest my time into someone who wants to invest in themselves. And I promise if the cycles repeat as they have been, I will have people coming out of the woodworks wanting to suck up my time, but I will remain dedicated to those that took the advantage of this opportunity early on and I will build them up. I'm gonna give a somewhat lengthy address in another video that will help you start to understand why this stuff matters and is possibly the greatest opportunity investment in human history. Today, I'm gonna to show you a website that lists all the crypto projects and how to use it so you can start doing some of your own research. Um, I do have some disclaimers to go over right now. I'm not a financial advisor and none of this can be considered financial advice. It's just my opinions. And some general advice, I cannot give any specific advice anyways, unless I knew your exact situation for counsel from me. So general advice is to divorce yourself from a love of money. It's simply a tool. Never invest more than you can afford to lose. This is crucial for your sanity because investing is not a get rich quick scheme. And you must hedge your bets, meaning have multiple investments that are not correlated. So if one goes belly up, you don't lose everything you have invested. Keep your cool, successful investing and trading is not for the greedy, it's for the calm and patient. This is why statistically 90% of traders lose money because they can't control their emotions. And that's all the disclaimers I have. So what we're gonna look at today is websites that list all of the coins that are out there on the markets. So you can start digging in and doing some research and I'll show you some of the things that they have available. Click it. So if you can see my screen now, do you see the website up there? Yep. Okay. So this is a website called CoinGecko, like the lizard.com. And this is my preferred one that I just use. There's one called CoinPaprika.com or CoinMarketCap.com that all have kind of the same information. So what you're looking at at the top here is it'll show the total number of coins that it's tracking or tokens, crypto projects, 6,170. The number of exchanges you can use to trade those things, 422. Market cap is now $1,055,000,000,000. Yay, we hit a trillion. 24 hour volume. And then it shows the Bitcoin dominance. This is important. We're seeing 66% dominance. That means 66% of all of that trillion dollars of capital that's tied up is all in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the big granddaddy of them, the history. The next biggest one is Ethereum, and that's only 13.5% of the market. Those other 6,168 of them split the rest of it. So that's just keep that in mind. That's very important how big Bitcoin is uh, right now. So that's just a fun fact. And then it starts going down the list here. You see number one. This is listed by market cap. And market cap is the supply of tokens times the price of tokens is the total value of everything that's out there. That's what the market cap is. So the biggest one is Bitcoin here. That's the original one. It was created because people viewed the way that the governments create money through a Federal Reserve fractional banking system as being flawed and against the people. And that's literally why Bitcoin was created. Now the technology behind Bitcoin they discovered can be used for a lot of other things. And that's where Ethereum was created. Ethereum is basically a decentralized computer system, a network that you could upload applications that you build to. And it uses all the technology of security and like unhackability of Bitcoin for basically applications like things you use on your phone, apps like that. So that's the second big daddy. And now Tether is number three. That's what we call a stable coin. 
So it's tied to the value of one US dollar. So with these prices being volatile, one potential use for that was, let's say you expected the price of Bitcoin to go way up and it goes to 100,000. Then you think it's gonna crash really hard. You might take $10,000 and put it in Tether. Now, let's say Bitcoin went to zero, just for this example, you still have that $10,000 worth of Tether of value that you have tied up. So it's basically, you can do a lot of things with it, but that's, that's the use of it. It's always equal to approximately one US dollar. Number four now, which has moved up recently, this is one of my favorite projects for potential gains. It's Polkadot. And this is another platform just like Ethereum, but has a lot of different features. It's kind of trying to do the same thing. XRP, we're going to like not really touch on that one for right now because they're going through a lawsuit with the SEC. I won't say too much about that, but that's, that's where it stands. Number five of biggest projects. Cardano is another platform like Ethereum or Polkadot kind of trying to do the same thing. These are what people would call Ethereum killers. They're trying to beat Ethereum because Ethereum has a large part of the market share right now. There's way more developers on Ethereum than these other ones for building the system up. Uh, then you got Litecoin, which is just a copy of Bitcoin with a few features that were changed. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, again, another copy of Bitcoin because, and they changed a few things because they thought it would be better than Bitcoin. Mind you, Bitcoin is still the winner. If these were better for any reason, naturally, they should be up where Bitcoin is right now. And we're early in this whole game, guys. I really think this technology is going to change the world. And if this is a ball game, we're just like probably throwing that first pitch. The guest pitcher gets on the field and throws it before we start the game. That's where we're at. Uh, Chainlink. This is another one of my favorite ones. It's unique. It is trying to take data from the real world and lock it up in the digital world of the blockchain in a trusted way to help things happen based on real world information. There's only one other competitor to this out there, which I haven't looked into too much, but I consider it a, basically a ripoff because they came out after Chainlink. Chainlink was very unique in this. That's called Band, B-A-N-D protocol. I don't know where that one is, uh, somewhere down the list. Um, then you move on to Stellar. Stellar is a, a fork of XRP. So a fork is a copy. When I was saying that these are copies of Bitcoin, those were forks of it. That's just a coding term. So Stellar is a fork of XRP. Uh, Binance coin is an exchange coin. So Binance is a big exchange. Like a, if you imagine like the NASDAQ, you go on to trade stocks or whatever. This is a coin that they use on their own platform. And by owning this, it lets you reduce your cost of fees for doing transactions on that network. So that's what that type of thing does. And going through this list is just giving you an idea of all the different types of things that are going on beyond Bitcoin, which is probably what you've heard of before. And you maybe have an idea of what it is like trying to be digital money. There's a lot of other things going on. USD coin is another one of these stable coins. Um, I believe that one is through Coinbase helped develop that one. Wrapped Bitcoin. This is an interesting one because it's taking Bitcoin and locking it up on the Ethereum network. So when every, every wrapped Bitcoin that's out there, uh, I'm not going to dig into it now, but each one of those takes away from the actual Bitcoin. It can't be traded on the Bitcoin network. It's locked up in a contract and it's being used on Ethereum. Um, then we're just moving down. Bitcoin SV, another one of those forks of Bitcoin. That one's been moving its way down the list, falling out of favor. Monero is a privacy coin. So it, <clears throat> excuse me, it's trying to do the same thing as Bitcoin, but in a completely private way where nobody can track it. Um, EOS is another platform. Um, Aave, now we're getting into some interesting stuff. So Aave is a whole new use of crypto that really, really started blowing up this year. It's called DeFi, D-E-F-I, or Decentralized Finance. That's protocols and programs that are trying to play the role of banks. So peer-to-peer -peer banking, where I can lend you money, you can borrow money against me or from me. All the things that banks would do, they're trying to do it in a decentralized way. So disrupting the banking industry, that's DeFi. And right now that's probably one of the biggest things going on in crypto to look into. Tezos is another sort of platform. They're unique. Uh, thing that they're doing is governance where it's more of a democracy where everybody gets to vote on how the protocol changes. Now, if I'm using a lot of technical terms, just forgive me. I try not to. Any questions you have, just type them into the chat and I will answer them. So if you're like, what's a protocol? There's no such thing as a dumb question. If you ask me, what, is, what does it mean to invest? That's not a dumb question. I'll try and explain it. Um, so yeah, just to give you an idea, there's a lot of stuff going on. These are the top 20 that we've gotten down to. Uniswap is a very unique one that it is a decentralized exchange. So there's no company that owns or runs this exchange. I put my tokens up into a pool and someone else wants to come and buy them. Uniswap does a transaction for us and I get you know, my money from selling you the tokens plus a little bit if I own Uniswap. 
I get to determine the governance of that program going forwards, like how the system works and maybe changes we want to make, I get to vote on that. And also I get dividends from the system. So any fees that the system is taking out, you might potentially get dividends and something like that. Now this I mean, if I'm gonna make any recommendations today or whatever, things to look into for your first steps, I would look into Uniswap. Simple reason being that as far as exchanges go, Coinbase.com is the biggest US exchange by far. And they're the mo probably the biggest one in the world, uh, possibly whatever, by far in the US. Um, Uniswap, the people participating in the networks and doing Uniswap, there's actually more volume on Uniswap than there is Coinbase right now. So that is a big deal. Celsius Network is another one of those, like Aave, where we can trade with each other and stuff, trying to be a banking network. Um, so just moving down the list, that's that's kind of some of the things to look into. If I were to give some suggestions, I would look into Uniswap, what it's all about, um, Chainlink, and Ethereum. So if you, and Bitcoin, of course, if you're just starting, you have to start with Bitcoin. You have to wrap your mind around what Bitcoin is. So that's all I wanted to show you today was this website, like I said, I'm going to give you a whole nother uh, State of the Union address, so to speak, that is relatively lengthy that I've typed up and it'll give you my, uh, here's that band protocol that I was talking about, kind of like chain link number 89 right now. Uh, yeah. So my Amber, help me pull up my main screen back up, please. What was the name of that website? Uh, Coin Gecko, like the lizard, coingecko.com. And it, it'll, it'll redirect you to coingecko.en for English. Okay. And I'll pull up a couple of, actually, let me share my screen and I'll show you the other couple of ones I recommended just so you can see what they look like. All right, I'm just gonna get a pen and write that down. Okay. Just share my screen one more time. The other one or another one, they may have some data or information on one that's not on another that you might want to look up. Coin Paprika, P-A-P-R-I-K-A, -A. Coin Paprika is basically very similar to Coin Gecko, where you can see they listed out all the same. Um, actually, I'll dig into one of the currencies and show you how to start looking at data. And then CoinMarketCap.com is the other big one. Some people don't like CoinMarketCap.com because it was there's some controversy back in the day because that's where everybody was going to get their data and they made some changes without really telling people that really put a shock to the system as far as how they were listing their data. So it made it look like things were happening when they weren't. Long story short, and they're owned by Binance, which some people do not trust Binance, uh, the exchange I was mentioning. Uh, so another one I wanna show you that's a little bit deeper. If you get this far, it's, uh, it's by Missari. I think it's called OnChain FX. I'm gonna Google it. So on-chain FX, as soon as you wrap your head around how to like look at things, when you go to onchainfx.com, they're actually taking some data off of the blockchain. So it's not just tracking prices and some other things. It's actually taking data off the blockchain. And because we can track every transaction, we can sort of monitor the flow of money of Bitcoin. So we could see it's like moving from exchanges to personal wallets. And we can determine based on the movement of money, what people are preparing to do and kind of uh, guesstimate if we're going to have some sort of a big sell-off, a big buy, whatever. Those are some really deeper things once you start getting into how you're actually going to invest. But I just wanted to throw that one on there for people that wanted to dig in a little deeper. Okay. So let me go back to Coin Market or uh, Coin Gecko, and I'll show you what you're looking at when you pull up a currency. So we'll pull up Bitcoin here, and it just shows Bitcoin BTC, these little letters are called tickers and it's just like uh, the stock market. Each, each company or whatever has its own little ticker so you can find it easier, I guess, just a nickname for it. And then you're gonna see what rank it is here, the website for it, if it has one, bitcoin.org. Uh, explorers, these are block explorers. So you can go in and look at the ledgers and see, see all the transactions and stuff. It's all public data or whatever. That's why it's kind of peer to peer. And then as you go down, you're gonna see your charts. You got one hour. The percentage gains 24 hours seven days 14 days uh you can these buttons right here will let you pull those charts up down below and then um this this here doesn't really matter for you but log, log it will matter if you really start digging in and you want to look logarithmic versus linear you'll see how the chart changes here let me pull up the max chart for bitcoin this is all-time bitcoin from 2013 this was the 2017 spike we had there 
-hmm. and then um this is what we're living through right now all-time highs in the past you know five six months um so when we switch that to logarithmic you'll notice on this side over here it's it's an equal scale zero ten thousand twenty thousand thirty thousand forty thousand switching that to logarithmic shows a bit of a different picture this shows more of the growth because you see it goes to 10 to 100 to 1000 to 10,000. So that means the same amount of space in the chart that it takes to go from 10 to 100, when you're up on this scale, it only takes like where my mouse is from here to here is that same amount of value. So but for this to keep going up, the higher up the charts you go, the more this should smooth out because it takes a lot more money to keep moving it up the chair, charts. So the fact that this is showing this sort of a pattern is showing complete growth. And I'll show you something unique. One of the most, you could see it in this chart. One of the most unique things about Bitcoin and how we can predict that it is going to go up in value is called the halving cycles. And what you're seeing on this chart is representative of the halving cycles. This happened because of one of the halving cycles, this big shoot up, this big shoot up. You could see this pattern here. This was all due to a halving cycle. And right now we're probably, as you can see here, this is where we're at. We're probably like right about here if this is where it's gonna end, if that makes sense. So on this chart, it's going to go way up to the right. And just because we're mumbling and chatting now saying more than I wanted to say, I'll let you guys know that that the end of this cycle on the one we're on right now is probably going to be at the end of this year, December, 2021, or could be before, could be after nobody can predict timing, but we can predict cycles. And that's what we're looking at. That was okay. kind of fun that that showed up. I didn't even realize that was going to show up by doing that. All right. So then as we go down, um, over on the right, you're going to see a bunch of information too. The price market cap, which I mentioned is the price and the amount of coins that are out there creates a total market cap. Dominance of the market of everything. Uh, seven day low, just a bunch of information to dig into. And then as you go down, the exchanges here is where you can go to buy it. It shows which exchange is selling the most of it and all that. And in any given coin, if the exchange or you want to get your hands on it and say Coinbase doesn't have it, you can go on here and find out who does sell it. Maybe it's on Uniswap, that decentralized exchange. You got to do a few technical things to go on there and use it. But obviously, I can teach you that if you're interested. And that's how you'll know where to get it is which exchanges it's listed on. Okay. Um, some information about Bitcoin down below. Uh, this is just a technical analysis that for it takes in a bunch of factors and automatically gives you either a buy or sell signal. And you can switch it for the different um some information what is bitcoin who created bitcoin they have these kinds of things on i like coin gecko for the reason that they go above and beyond they take a lot of extra data to educate people too and they do actually have um reports that they put out our 2020 yearly crypto report is fresh off the press read it first understand the state of cryptocurrency in 2020 from the rise of DeFi to bitcoin's bull run and much more so they put out their own little reports kind of like what i'm doing for you guys to tell you what's going on and that's really cool too. So I, I do highly recommend coingecko.com versus some of the other ones. Okay. Um, so the Bitcoin having, this is good information. I'm gonna go in and look at a different one because Bitcoin has so much information about it. I wanna see like, for example, let's say Polkadot. What do they have to say about Polkadot down there? I wanna know how much information they have. So this is it. This is all they have about Polkadot. So just to give you an example, Bitcoin's a little bit different because there is so much information about Bitcoin out there these days. Um, so yeah, this is the opportunity is the fact that it's hard to understand, wrap your mind around. And if you take the time to start investing now, uh, you will be ahead of the game because I don't think it's going anywhere. I think it's going to be a part of our future. And I think it behooves everybody to understand what's going on. Uh, Amber, do we have any questions? Okay. So a couple of questions hmm, that we had come up. Um, how is crypto secure? So we'll just talk about Bitcoin, for example. Bitcoin is a ledger that says who owns what Bitcoin and the difference between say a bank and how they keep their ledgers and Bitcoin or any system we have now, it's called a distributed ledger technology. DLT is what Bitcoin is based on. That's what it's part of how it works. So there's going to be thousands of computers that all have a copy of that ledger. However many people are, however many nodes are on the network. If I were to go in and try and say, oh no, my account actually, you sent me 50 bucks and try and hack that. I could do that on my computer, that's fine. I can go in there and do that. But all the other nodes through the algorithm are gonna see that that's different and it's gonna reject it. And that's called an orphan child chain when that happens, whatever technical term. So that's kind of how it secures that. There's a whole bunch of uh, ledgers and copies of it. And through the magic of the code, it knows if anybody's trying to change something and you can't, 
yeah, it's essentially unhackable because of that. If that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, I'll try and answer it in another way later. Can people steal my Bitcoin? Well, yes and no. You cannot steal, or just as I mentioned, you can't change anything on the ledger directly. But if I had my Bitcoin on coin, uh, um, coinbase.com and you fished me in an email and pretended that you were Coinbase and said, oh, I need you to reset your password for you. Just like any other system, you can steal it but it is one uh, in that sort of a way through uh, social engineering uh, directly. No, Bitcoin cannot be stolen without you giving your password and some your your key to your wallet that lets you pull Bitcoin out. Unless someone gets that key somehow, which there's a lot of ways that could happen, they cannot steal it. And how to store it? So that's a good question. That's what we're talking about right now. So because those things can be hacked and uh, potentially like any system could be hacked Coinbase's system and they can leak stuff out of your account on there. You do want to eventually hold your own key and your own crypto and offline, they call it. So most people will use what's called a hardware wallet. And that is a USB device that actually is a go between your computer and your wallet. And it, it will generate your private key and keep it right on there so it never actually um, goes onto your computer screen because technically someone could have already hacked your computer and be monitoring your keystrokes and all that stuff. You'll never have that password ever go onto a computer with one of these hardware wallets and no one can steal it. That's a little bit more advanced stuff. And if you have enough money tied up, I would say the average person doesn't need to start worrying about that until they have thousands of dollars tied up, anything that you really say, now now it's getting serious. I don't want anybody to mess with this stuff. You know, everybody's price level is different. Maybe a hundred dollars is serious for someone, maybe a hundred million is serious for someone else. So that's, there is ways to store it. Um, it's too complicated to get into on this video and I'll find a curated way to say it. Anything else? Oh, yes. Is it easy to buy Bitcoin? Absolutely. When I got into Bitcoin, um, it's kind of funny. I was just telling my mama this story yesterday that when I wanted to sign up for my Coinbase account to start buying some crypto, my bank was confused. I actually had to call them and authorize it because it was being triggered or labeled as a potential scam, which is kind of funny because it's one of the most secure and trusted network or um, exchanges out there right now. And Coinbase is kind of like a crypto bank. So you can buy and sell crypto on there, turn it into dollars, send those dollars back to your actual bank account, this and that. It's very easy these days. PayPal just launched the ability to do it. If you have PayPal, you can simply buy and sell crypto on there. Cash app is a popular app that you can use it with. Square, which is a big payment system. They're integrating crypto into a lot of their stuff. Um, so yeah, it's very easy these days. And we can do a video on how to buy and sell, but that's probably gonna be more like personalized. Um, what I really wanna do is just uh, anybody that really wants to take me up on it, I'll invest into them and show them anything that they might need to do. That's the best way to do it because I have so much information that I don't wanna share stuff with you that's not gonna pertain to you. So that's about it. That's all the questions we have for today, right, Ambie? Okay. All right, thanks for watching and I will make that other lengthy video where I'm actually like laying out why I think this stuff matters. All right. Thank bye you. Bye. bye.